Uh, I'm going to speak about uh, large-scale real estate development from um, intelligence gathered in a couple of ways. One is uh, quite a number of years working with local communities, uh, hearing their concerns about how they're changing uh, and their strategies to cope with that change. Uh, also, I've been quite involved with the Academy since it began its work on Vancouver Island and uh, have had a lot of involvement with the communities that have been interacting with the Academy. And again, hearing the issues, seeing the frustrations that have to be addressed, and then looking for possible solutions. So um, the title of my presentation, if I'm going the right way here, is What Drives Large-Scale Real Estate Development? Uh, we're referring to the Mid-Island region, so between the, the light blue lines, roughly, um, four regional districts in there, and that's the kind of data that I'll refer to. Um, so what I'm going to do is um, I'll do uh, several things here. So there's um, the first part of my presentation is just the assumption and thesis. Uh, second part are demographic trends. The third part is uh, the changing built environment and large scale development. And uh, then I'll, I'll have some conclusions that I'll present to you. So <coughs> my approach to this topic is that um, I think real estate development, particularly projects involving residential as, other, as well as other land uses, can be a pretty useful um, proxy for describing change. And uh, the reasons why are obvious, because it involves people and land. And you know in your communities when you see people coming and going and real estate development taking place, it feels like things are changing. Of course it is. The second assumption is that to discuss and understand real estate development in a meaningful way, uh, one has to understand the comp that complex systems are involved. Uh, there are two systems in this equation, uh, human settlement and ecological systems. And